Great soul in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Warmly welcome each and every single one who's been watching our Kethra Ministries videos. 
it's been very encouraging for us as a family we started this video ministry and then God allowed us to to do a physical ministry based in Chelmsford so people who's been in and around Chelmsford they're always welcome to, to our church fellowship service every Sunday at about 12.30. So for this Sunday I have taken the scripture from Mark chapter 1. Uh, if I read it from Mark chapter 1, verse 1 onwards. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah, the prophet. I'll send you, send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region, and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing these things, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I. The thongs of whose sandals are not worthy I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for two days. Being tempted by Satan, he was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. So powerful scripture. This mark started his scripture from start, start from one onwards. He didn't start the scripture about the birth of Jesus Christ, but he started about how Jesus Christ has been prepared to do the gospel. So powerful are uh, these, these things that has been written in Mark chapter 1. It says like this, it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. This is what is being written in the Old Testament before Jesus even come to this place, come to this earth. Before Jesus even come to, come to this world as a son of God, Isaiah already wrote, in, wrote this in the Old Testament. There was the son of God is going to come to this world and then got to be prepared the way for him. That's what we can see a few times about uh, about the about the verses like verse 4 and so John came it says like this verse 4 and then if you see at that time Jesus came from Nazareth so we've seen a couple of times about this preparation preparation of Jesus to preach the gospel before he even done the mighty miracles in this world before Jesus even started preaching the gospel before Jesus started mighty miracles like feeding for 5,000 people with just five, uh, five bread and two fish. Before he started, before he started, he began his ministry. So this is all happened before he even started this whole ministry. So John is preparing Jesus to do the ministry by baptizing. It says like this, the one that comes after me, I may be baptizing with you with the water, but the one that comes after me, baptizing with the Holy Spirit. That's so powerful. In those days, John was doing the baptism in the water, confessing their sins. It says like this, 
verse 5, confessing their sins, they were baptized him in the Jordan River. So it's very important. It's not about you being baptized. You always need to confess your sins. Without you being confessed your sins, you cannot be baptized. It's very important. It's not about you being cleansed externally. It is also very important you need to be cleansed internally. This is very important nowadays. We've seen people, most of the people, without they being confessed their sins, they take the baptism. Or without being they confessing sins, they, they take the communion. Without they being confessing their sins, they put the blame on somebody else for the mistakes that they had done in those people's lives. It's very important accepting the mistake as it is. That's where you be, will be transformed. For you to become a new person in this world, you've got to accept all the mistakes that you've done in your life. It's very important. That's what John is saying is, confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of common hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I. The thongs of whose sandals are not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That means there is a transformation. When Jesus baptized you internally, that's what it's all about. Baptizing means transformation of a person internally, not transformation of a person externally. Because when you baptize you by water, you may be transformed externally, you may be cleansed, your dirty stuff, but you may not be even cleansed internally, the death that is being there inside of your heart and mind. When you cleanse by the Holy Spirit, when you confess your sins, that is the time that you will be really transformed in this world. It is very important to baptize um, with, 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 with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit is so powerful. It transforms you from no way to everywhere. That's how it is going to be. You may be a worse person in, in, in your past, but when the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, then your past will go and then new things will come. All the past will be forgiven and then you will be transformed. That's how we've seen with, with the disciples, like especially with the with Paul, we've seen the Paul how he's been by with the Holy Spirit, but he was being transformed completely. Once he was a murderer, he was killing many people who was preaching um, the gospel. The same sound turns into Paul, and then he was very bold enough to preach the gospel because he was completely transformed ex internally. That's more important. That's what the the power of the Holy Spirit. When you invite the Holy Spirit, when you ask the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you, that's when you do the mighty things for the God. Without having the Holy Spirit presence, you cannot preach the gospel in this world. That's what uh, in the 18th century, coming close to 19th century, the whole the world, the gospel came from this very country, UK. So the, the John Wesley from UK, he says like this, give me hundreds of hundred preachers who fear nothing but sin, who fear nothing but sin, who is so passionate for God, either it might be clergy or evangelist, who it is, who fear nothing but sin, who will be passionate for the Christ. It's very important, so powerful words that has been spoken by John Wesley in the, in the 18th and 19th century because in those days, the gospel was not even spread. The very gospel that came to this world through this uh, the, this country, UK, and John Wesley was so powerful in those days. So he was the one who was an instrumental to take this gospel forward for many other countries, especially in those days, 19th century. The gospel came to uh, America as well through this um, through this person, and then it spread across the world. So as it says, like as before Jesus comes to this world, then the gospel must be preached so boldly. That is very important. You've got to be so so bold enough to preach the gospel. It's going to happen only when you fill with the Holy Spirit, not fill with the theological background, not, not to be filled with, uh, with the worldly stuff, but when you fill the Holy Spirit, the things that come from your mouth will be pleasing to the God and God alone. No one else. 
That's all the work of the Holy Spirit. When you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, your job is always to do according to the will and wish of the God. Not according to the uh, will and wish of the people that has been surrounded by you. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not controlled by the, the, by the people who you are in, you, who you are with. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will be completely controlled by the God. That's a powerful manifestation that you will be experience those sort of things when you are completely uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, when you are baptized by the Holy Spirit. This is the thing, that's what Jesus said before he ascends. Um, that's what he says after me going to, to the Father, I will send you one more comforter. There's none other than the Holy Spirit. It is very important you should have that Holy Spirit experience. That's what we see even in Acts chapter it says like this. It's like upper room experience. When all 120 people assembled together in one room. When they fell with the Holy Spirit, the way they came to that room, but they didn't leave that room the way saying they came. That's how it is. When you go to the church, it is very important to come and transform. Not, not to, no, church is not for the, for the social event, neither church, church is not for the social gathering. It is very important, church is always about the transformation of a person, accepting who you are and realizing who the real creator of you. That's how it is. When you fill with the Holy Spirit, as it says in the Bible, the, the, the gospel that you, you're going to preach is going to be very bold because you're not controlled by any external factors. Neither you will not be influenced by these worldly people. Neither you will not be taken, neither you will not be, you will not be taken control by your own family members. It's very important. You need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So at that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And Jesus was coming up out of the water. He saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. So the peace came. So this dove, the symbolic meaning of dove means the peace came as Jesus was coming up. That's why the peace came upon Jesus. So it's very important for you and me to have a peace. It's very important to have the obedience because Jesus, before he ministered, he started the ministry in this world, he was being prepared and then he was being validated by the Father. After he was being validated by the Father, then only he started the mighty miracles. But the Father didn't see the Son of, of his performance. So that's how it is. So powerful. Like you may be thinking that God will judge you based on the performance, based on the merits that you have in this world. It is not the case. He will, he will put your, his, your blessings before even you experience, before you, even you start your business, before you start your venture, before you start the gospel. That's how powerful God is always ahead of each one of us. He don't judge based on the people's deeds and actions and people's behavior. When he calls people, he will make sure that he will fulfill his purpose in, inside of you. He will make sure that he will fulfill his purpose in each one of our lives. It is not about the talents that you have. It is not about the qualification that you have. It is not about the friends that you have. It is not about how many followers that you have in this world. It is not about how many views that you have. In. It is not about how much rich you are, you are in this world. It is not about what other additional factors that you have in this world. These are not the factors that, is, that qualifies you to, to, to be judged by the God. God always selects the people who he please. It's very important for you, for, for you and me to be pleased by the God. It is very important to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. 
and then accepting the sins, confessing the sins, and then recognizing the fact that Jesus is the one that created each one of us, and then being obedient to the word of God. It is very important. That's when the peace will come. When you are being obedient to the word of God, when you are being obedient to the to the to the living God, that's when the peace comes. That's what it says in the Bible. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven: "You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased." These are words spoken by the God Himself. Not after he performed the mighty miracles. Before he performed the mighty miracles, he says this word. That's how it is. That's why God validates the people. Not based on the merits that you have. And suddenly, if you see the voice was to her. And once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert 40 days. Suddenly, after the peace, it doesn't mean that the temptation won't come. Immediately the temptation comes. It is always possible for each one of us when you're being tested, when, when you go through the uh, process of uh, process of being being transformed into this world, you will face the trials and tribulations. So even the Son of God he himself, after God spoken a word on him that with with you, I'm very well pleased. The very next thing happens, the temptation for Jesus. He's been tempted by Satan for 40 days. In the desert, as we've seen in the worst, uh, later stages, like it says like this, he's been tempted all the time for 40 days. But our God is a God who always works according to the will of the Father. He knows the very purpose that came to this world. That is why he answered to Satan as per the will and wish of the Father. It is very important that you've got to be obedient to the Father. That's where you see the blessings. You shouldn't forget those things. And then if somebody's been tempted, and then if Satan tempted Jesus in those wilderness for 40 days. But never at any given time, never at any point of time, Jesus never surrendered to Satan. Satan himself. Satan himself left Jesus after tempting him for 40 days. So very powerful, like you've got to be very careful with whom you are into. When you are in this world, you may be thinking that once you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, you may be thinking that peace will be there all the time with you. It's not the case. You will see the trials and the tribulations all through the life. It is very important how you face those trials, how you face very bold in those situations, how to deal uh, with those uh, tough situations. You've got to face those things in your life. It is very important. It is all the time God always uh, tests the people that he loves more. It is for the people who's been more obedient to the Lord or for the people that has been loved by the Lord, they're the one who's going to get the, get the tests and trials in, in those people's lives. So it is very important how to overcome those tests as based on the... Uh, based on the voice of the Holy Spirit, when you've been having that close relationship with God, it's very important. That relationship with God is very important. One to one relationship. When you have that relationship, when you encounter a one to one relationship with God, that's where you experience the manifestation. That's where you can see the blessings in your life. That's where you can see the greater manifestation in your life. That's where you can attract many souls. Without having the Holy Spirit encounter, as John Wesley says, that give me hundred preachers who fear nothing but sin. That's the only aim that you should have. You shouldn't fear nothing. You shouldn't fear about people. You shouldn't fear that what others say, what others think, or what. You shouldn't fear that whether I can please these people or not. You should only fear, but only fear for the sin. You should only fear for the God. When you fear for only sin and when you fear, fear for only the God, that's way you will be attracting many souls in this world. Many times we have seen people do come up with many, many ways, but you need to be very careful what it is being written in the Bible that needs to be preached accordingly. This Bible is, is the true living God. This the word of the Lord is is, is real. So you've got to be you've got to be all the time 
when it comes to your trials and temptation you need to realize that you need to be you need to become very very close you need to come very close to the god when you when your association with god is so personal that's where you're going to see the mighty miracles this is what it's happened like mark started his own mark's mark scriptures the whole thing started with jesus ministry because he is recollecting the things and then how jesus is being prepared how jesus is being prepared for his ministry if you and me want to become want to be in the ministry it's very important there should be a preparation there should be a calling and there should be a holy spirit presence that's where you're going to see the mighty things in each one of our lives let's close this today's topic with having this prayer Thank you, Jesus, for giving this wonderful opportunity on this very Sunday. Thank you for the word that you have given for this day and for this week. As it says in the scripture in Mark chapter, Jesus, before he started his ministry, is being validated by the Father. Before even he performed the miracles into this, into this world, God himself spoke in to his son. With him, I'm very well pleased. Not based on the performance of Jesus, he says these words, but he prepares Jesus to do the mighty things. Similarly, each one of us who's been watching these videos, there should be a preparation, there should be obedience to the word of God. That's where you're going to see the mighty things. When you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, when each one of us has been transformed internally instead of transformed by externally with water and with other things, when you've been transformed by the Holy Spirit, that's where you will be seeing the real miracles in our lives. If you want to be transformed internally, then you need to ask God. You need to ask God to dwell inside of you so that He is the one who's going to transform each one of our lives. As it says in the Bible many times, John says, Before me, after me, there's a person come, he's going to baptize each one of us with the Holy Spirit. Similarly, each one of us who's been watching these videos, let those people experience that experience, baptizing with the Holy Spirit, transforming those people's lives. As it says, once you've been transformed, your past will be forgiven, and then all things will become new. We've seen the same things with Paul. He was a son before he's been transformed by the Holy Spirit. He was being he was being killing many people in the name of who's speaking in the name of Jesus Christ. But the same person is being used so mightily. Let each one of us who's been watching these videos invite the Holy Spirit inside of those people lives so that they can experience the things that they never imagined in those people lives we especially pray for for this ministry though it is very small many people say that mighty things is not going to happen from smallest places but we know one thing people in those days also say it's like no one good is going to come from small town of Bethlehem but they didn't realize that the savior is going to come from the very small town called Bethlehem People may see that whether you have a background, people may see that whether you have a richness, people may see that whether you have a followers in this world, but God never judges you based on the richness or based on the followers that you have or based on the deeds and works that you do in this world. He only calls the people for those who's having an intimate relationship with Him. Let each one of us have that relationship one on relationship with Jesus so that they can experience that so that they can encounter the mighty blessings in those people's lives. We especially pray for, for the people who's been helping this ministry to take forward, the people who's been helping through social media, the people who's been helping uh, in, in, in Chelmsford location. Let those families, let those people bless abundantly so that they can have the heart that, that they, so that they can have the heart that takes this ministry that, that takes this ministry forward. We also pray for, for, for the countries, especially Ukraine, as they've been attacked by Russia, and give those uh, leaders uh, knowledge, strength, so they can the, take the right decisions at the right time. 
We also pray for the people who's been in sickness, especially we pray for the people who's been in hospitals in the beds. For any reason, let those people get healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Thank you each and everyone who's been watching our Kirtana Ministries videos from past uh, one year. It's been very encouraging. As we started this ministry uh, through videos in December 2020 during the time of lockdown, and then God allowed us to continue this video ministry for more than one year. The people who's been watching these videos, we've been thankful to them. We've been, uh, we've been blessed uh, for, for the work that we've been doing. People who don't know anything about what we do, you can even log into our website, www.keithlerministries.org. And people who's been watching these videos, please do share and subscribe to your friends. Thank you. Thank you very much.